So we're going to be talking about Moore's circles today. And in rock mechanics, they're functionally very similar to what you'd experience in a strength of materials course. So that means that the horizontal axis is going to be our sigma, right, our normal stress. The vertical axis is going to be tau, our shear stress. Easy enough, right? The one distinction to make with rock mechanics is, of course, because we say that compression is positive, this axis to the right of the tau axis is going to be all stresses that put the rock in compression. That's going to be different from anything else where you're working with, say, steel. We're usually going to define positive to be tension. Similarly, we're going to define positive clout tau to be clockwise and negative tau to be counterclockwise, which is, again, different. So just to sort of motivate us, let's say we have a, a stress element down here. And, of course, then we'll have our normal stresses acting on each face. This is acting in the y direction, it's sigma y. This is acting in the x direction, it's sigma x. And then we'll have our shear stresses acting parallel to these planes here. And of course, since this one is acting in the y direction, we'll call it tau xy, and this is going to be tau yx. Now, the way I drew this, all of these are just in their natural positive uh, states, right? So this makes it easy for us. Let's let's start drawing these little pictures here. Now, it doesn't really matter what these are. I'm not going to put numbers in for these just yet. We might do an example with concrete numbers in a future video, but for now I'm just going to go through the theory of how you would set up a Morse circle for any stress state like this. So let's say that sigma x is, and again, it doesn't really matter. We'll say sigma x is here. We'll say it's bigger than sigma y. Let's put sigma y right there, a little closer to the tau axis. Of course, the origin is going to be zero normal stress and zero shear stress. And then we'll say since tau xy is acting in the positive direction, because we defined clockwise to be positive, we'll put that up here. We'll call that tau xy. And then you'll recall that tau yx is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to tau xy. So we'll try to do a similar distance down here. It's not going to be perfect. I'm just doing this by eyeballing it. But now we'll draw a little guiding line here to make sure that we can hit them all. There. There. Not perfect again, but we want to find where tau xy intersects sigma x. We'll put a point there. We want to find where tau yx intersects sigma y. And then we have two points like that. Beautiful, right? And then we can come in with, I'll actually use a straight edge for this, and draw the line that connects the two. And then this allows us to find the center point of that circle. Now, it shouldn't be too hard, right? We'll call this, sometimes you'll call it sigma average or sigma mean. I'll call it sigma m for short. We'll say that's going to be equal to Think about it. This is going to be the average value between these two. And since we have only two points, that average just becomes sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. Okay. And now before I actually draw the circle, some people will just go here and first just eyeball a little rough circle out. But I'm going to do, I like to find the points on the sigma axis first. And these are actually called the principal stresses, right? They occur when there's zero shear stress, and they will be the maximum and minimum stresses that this rock can experience in the x and y directions. And this is important, of course, because you want to find those max, and particularly the max stress, right, to determine if failure under certain conditions will indeed occur. So, okay, there's an easy way to do that, right? We have sigma m now, and you'll see, ooh, we've got a little triangle here. We call this in here 2 theta. That's going to be twice the angle theta that it would take to rotate this stress state to the state at which their principal stresses occur. And it's 2 because when you rotate this guy, you only have to do 180 to reach the full, uh, the until you reach the same stress state. But on the Moore's circle, since it is a circle, you have to do the full 360 to get the exact same you know, points in this space. So 2 theta, and then using this, we can make a little triangle, right? 
I won't draw an arrow, but you can see this is our right triangle. That's our right angle. This guy in here is two theta. And then the y distance is gonna be just tau xy. And the x distance is gonna be the difference between these two points. I'll label this here as sigma m. So that's gonna be sigma x, the bigger one, minus sigma m, the smaller one. And you can of course plug sigma m in as these values here. For the sake of keeping it clean here, I won't do that just yet. And then this we'll call r, right? The hypotenuse of this triangle is gonna be r. That's the radius of the Mohr's circle. And of course, now you can probably realize that if we have the radius of the circle, then we can just go that same distance r out and find where we're gonna reach the maximum stress. That'll be sigma x and the minimum stress which would be sigma y, or closest to sigma y, I should say. Okay, so just doing a little bit of a Pythagorean theorem here, we can say that r squared is equal to the square root of tau xy squared plus the difference between sigma x and sigma m squared. Oops, didn't have to put the squared up there, I guess, since I put the squared root in. So now we have a value for r, and then we can go out that same distance here. Again, I'm not going to calculate any values here, so I'll just estimate. We'll say that that becomes sigma 1, we'll usually say, is our maximum principal stress, and then sigma 2 will be our minimum. And then using that, we can say that sigma 1 is equal to sigma m plus r. And then if you plug all of that in, of course, you'll get that sigma 1 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus our r value, which is the square root of tau xy squared. Might run out of space here. I'll try. Sigma x minus sigma m squared. There we go. So that's going to be our value for sigma 1. Sigma 2 you can imagine is gonna be the same thing. Just subtract uh, this value from this value instead, right? We're going the same distance back because it's a circle, it's gonna have the same radius. We just have to worry about, instead we're moving backwards. And now with this in mind, we can finally plot a circle here with greater confidence. We know that these two points will be on it. And then in fact, you know, if you knew the exact R value, it would be probably be convenient to go a distance R up and then land somewhere in here and a distance r down and land somewhere in there. And we know that these points are actually also going to be on it. So now we can take our best shot at sketching a circle here. Oh boy. This is going to be a little more of a, a little bit more of an ellipsoid. But that's just because of the way I drew my axes. Nothing here was to scale. But you can see, you know, you'd pretend that this is R, this is R, right? Everything is uh, within a circle. And you could use that too, once you have the principal stresses, like in the last video we did an example with a fault plane. Let's say you wanted to rotate it to find the stresses acting along that specific plane. Well then, you know, you have all these geometric properties to find now, the radius, the distances you might wanna move from sigma y, sigma m, sigma x, sigma one or sigma two. So you could go and find the stress state at any point, let's say you want to find this guy here, you know, you can go in and start just defining new things like maybe this angle is two phi. And then you have a distance here, you still have R. The entire circle is now completely defined and we can use it as an incredibly powerful tool to find the stress at any given point. You can also do a more circle with strain, uh, but that I might go into that in a future video, maybe not. It's incredibly similar. Um, but yeah, that is the Moore's circle as applied to rock mechanics.